United Nations announced on Thursday that a team will be sent to Syria to assess the humanitarian situation in wake of the violent crackdown on protesters nationwide. Mission, uh, going into Valerie Amos, uh, head of UN Humanitarian Affairs, told the council that the team would need unrestricted access to all areas of Syria in order to carry out the mission. Every member of the, of the Security Council UN Human Rights Chief Navi Pillai told members of the council that human rights violations may have taken place and suggested the case be presented at the International Criminal Court. The Syrian government has not changed course uh, and in fact if anything uh, its actions uh, over the last two weeks have uh, escalated uh, and those actions uh, as we've heard before and as we heard again today uh, amount to uh, violent attacks against overwhelmingly peaceful uh, and cross-sectarian uh, groups of protesters. Uh, and we heard from Navi Pile, for example, that there is clear evidence of a shoot-to-kill policy. The head of European Union foreign policy, Catherine Ashton, said that the group would come up with a broader range of sanctions, while the United States has already declared a freeze on Syrian assets, a ban on U.S. investments in the country, and a ban on imports from Syria, including petroleum. As has been said by colleagues, we will start working immediately on a draft resolution that will include sanctions because we think that it's necessary to increase the pressure on the Syrian government. You cannot ask the opposition to join in a dialogue while you are shooting people, you are taking people uh, into custody, uh, you are torturing them. That's not a way to conduct a kind of national dialogue. President Bashar al-Assad on Thursday informed UN Chief Ban Ki-moon in a phone conversation that military operations in Syria had been halted. About 2,000 people have died in the violent crackdown since the uprising began mid-March, according to the UN. Nora Faraj, Al Arabiya.